The market has shifted. Should you wait to buy a home if you are a home buyer or should you wait to sell your house if you are a seller? Is it a good thing that the market has shifted? Well, that's what I will be talking about today. I will be showing you some graphs about the current housing market, inflation, housing inventory, mortgage rates, and home ownership. I will be explaining what's going on if we're going to have a housing crisis or a housing bubble. So stay tuned. Hi there, this is Len Alvarez with the Alley Group Real Estate coming to you from Charlotte, North Carolina. We post all things real estate here, so it's up to you if you want to subscribe or not to our channel, but I would appreciate it if you could please down below. It's just my number one job in a shifting real estate market to inform and provide clarity to our buyers and sellers during these uncertain times. The market has shifted, and that's a good thing. Demand and sales are headed back to pre-pandemic levels, which were some of the strongest in recent history. But the shift has caused a great deal of confusion and uncertainty. Here are six housing market questions. Number one, is the housing market going to crash? Headlines right now scare consumers that the boom is over and the economy is slowing down. To really understand what's happening with real estate today, it's important to lean on the experts for reliable information. Experts say the housing market isn't in a bubble and we're not heading for a crash. Here are three graphs to show this isn't a housing bubble. There's a shortage of homes on the market today, not a surplus. The supply of inventory needed to sustain a normal real estate market is approximately six months. Anything more than that is an overabundance and will cause prices to depreciate. Anything less than that is a shortage and will lead to continued price appreciation. For historical context, there were too many homes for sale during the housing crisis many of which were short sales and foreclosures, and that caused prices to tumble. Today, supply is growing, but there's still a shortage of inventory available. Today, unsold inventory sits at just a 3.0 month supply at the current sales pace. Mortgage standards were much more relaxed during the crash. During the lead up to the housing crisis, it was much easier to get a home loan than it is today. Running up to 2006, banks were creating artificial demand by lowering lending standards and making it easy for just about anyone to qualify for a home loan or refinance their current home. Back then, lending institutions took on much greater risk in both the person and the mortgage products offered. That led to mass defaults, foreclosures, and falling prices. Today, things are different and purchasers face much higher standards for the mortgage companies. The foreclosure volume is nothing like it was during the crash. The most obvious difference is the number of homeowners that were facing foreclosure after the housing bubble burst. Foreclosure activity has been on the way down since the crash because buyers today are more qualified and less likely to default on their loans. In addition, homeowners today are equity rich, not tap out. In the run up to the housing bubble, some homeowners were using their homes as personal ATMs. Many immediately withdrew their equity once it built up. When home values began to fall, some homeowners found themselves in a negative equity situation where the amount they owed on their mortgage was greater than the value of their home. Some of those households decided to walk away from their homes and that led to a wave of distressed property listings which sold at considerable discounts that lowered the value of other homes in the area. Today, prices have risen nicely over the last few years, and that's given homeowners an equity boost. 
With the average home equity now standing at $207,000, homeowners are in a completely different position this time. Hearing talk about a potential recession? Wondering what that means for the housing market? Know that an economic slowdown does not equal a housing crisis. In four out of the last six U.S. recessions, home prices actually increased. Message me so we can talk about your housing needs and goals in today's market. What's happening with mortgage rates now and in the future? Rising mortgage rates are no doubt one of the biggest factors impacting the housing market right now. I'd like to remind you that the low rates of the last few years were an anomaly. As inflation rises and mortgage rates climb, many may see their purchasing power shrink and their dream of home ownership fade. However, it's important to remember one big piece of economic wisdom. There is no better hedge against inflation than home ownership. A home is a tangible asset that typically holds or grows in value. In most decades, home prices have outperformed inflation. If you're thinking about buying a home today, know that history shows home ownership is a good hedge against inflation. If the economy slows further, what does that mean for real estate? Post-2009, nothing will strike fear into the hearts of buyers and sellers like the word recession. But as the economy slows down, history tells us this would likely mean lower mortgage rates for those looking to refinance or buy a home. While no one really knows exactly what the future holds, one thing will forever remain the same. People will always need a place to call home. Historically, each time the economy slowed down, mortgage rates decreased. And while history doesn't always repeat itself, we can learn from it. While an economic slowdown needs to happen to help taper inflation, it hasn't always been a bad thing for the housing market. Typically, it has meant that the cost to finance a home has gone down, and that's a good thing. What will happen in the second half of this year? Yes, we are seeing a slowdown. However, we are really just heading back toward the market pace we saw pre-pandemic, and those were still great years for real estate. Focus on the big picture, and that's this. The housing market is still very strong, and previous projections are already outperforming what industry experts forecasted earlier this year. Should I wait to buy a home? This is probably one of the biggest questions I'm getting asked right now, and it's never been more important to have a good answer for it. Even though purchasing a home today may not be as easy as it was a couple of years ago, the latest data shows that inventory levels are rising, which means more moderate price appreciation and more options for buyers. Experts say home prices will continue to appreciate in the coming years. Greg McBride, Chief Financial Analyst at Bankrate, explains how inflation is affecting the housing market. Inflation will have a strong influence on where mortgage rates go in the months ahead. Whenever inflation finally starts to ease, so will mortgage rates. But even then, home prices are still subject to demand and very tight supply. Wondering if you should buy a home this year? Experts say that growth will continue. Mark Cousin, financial writer at Investopedia says, real estate is one of the time-honored inflation hedges. It's a tangible asset, and those tend to hold their value when inflation reigns, unlike paper assets. More specifically, as prices rise, so do property values. Message me if you're ready to invest in home ownership. Should I wait to sell my house? What's causing ongoing home price appreciation? If you're thinking about making a move, you probably want to know what's going to happen to home prices for the rest of the year. While experts say price growth will be moderate due to this shifting market, ongoing appreciation is expected. That means home prices won't fall. Here's a look at two key reasons experts forecast continued price growth. Supply and demand. While growing, housing supply is still low. Even though inventory is increasing this year as the market moderates, supply is still low. Millennials will create sustained buyer demand moving forward. The frenzy the market saw during the pandemic is because there was more demand than homes for sale. 
That drove home prices up as buyers competed with one another for available homes. And while buyer demand has moderated today in response to higher mortgage rates, data tells us demand will continue to be driven by the large generation of millennials aging into their peak home buying years. Odetta Cushy, Deputy Chief Economist at First American, explains. Millennials continue to transition to their prime home buying age and will remain the driving force in potential home ownership demand in the years ahead. That combination of millennial demand and low housing supply continues to put upward pressure on home prices. The bottom line is, based on today's factors driving supply and demand, experts project home appreciation will continue. It'll just happen at a more moderate pace as the housing market continues to shift back toward pre-pandemic levels. As a seller, now is the best time to sell your house. You might have a huge equity sitting in your home right now. Contact us if you are thinking of selling your home in the Greater Charlotte. We believe an individual should feel comfortable when buying and selling a home. There you go, folks. What I just discussed are based on facts and not on anyone's opinion. If you have any questions about the real estate or housing market, please do not hesitate to contact me or my husband, Albert Alvarez, or just visit our website at livingingreatercharlotte.com. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.